Um, I'm Sean. I'm going to talk about cross-browser compatibility. But before you fall asleep, <laughs> let me just tell you that it's really cool. Okay. All right. So let me tell you a story. You just spent like a whole week making your WordPress site look amazing. And you've been playing with your CSS and your dev tools, and you've been you know, getting everything. You got some nice overlays. You got this nice nav bar. You got the, got the markup image alignment going. And, you, and, you, and you, you're making it for your, for your boss. And, and you're like, OK, I really think you're going to really like this site. I, I'm really excited. He opens up IE6. <laughs> and he pulls up the site that you had. <laughs> and it looks like that. And you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe that it looks like that on IE6 because like, it was so awesome before. Um, and here is where you need to know about cross-browser compatibility. <laughs> All right, so what is it? Cross-browser refers to the ability of a website, web application, HTML construct, or client-side script to function in environments that provide the required features and um, to borrow out or degrade gracefully when features are absent. Um, and, 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 and making your site cross-browser compatible is just kind of the, uh, the tools that you can use in order, and, and like different kinds of scripts and, and different kinds of things in order to make this uh, work for your website. And let's go ahead and not do that. OK, so an outline of the, the rest of the talk um, is a quick history of cross-browser compatibility, because it's kind of a cool, uh, a couple of really cool things that, that happened when HTML5 came out. Um, and then like sticking points like the, you, that you could understand, like um, JavaScript support um, when HTML5 came out, um, CSS uh, issues and responsiveness, um, API support for um, different kinds of really cool things that happen in Chrome, but sometimes not, not in other places. Um, and then different tools that you can use to uh, test your site in, uh, in other browsers. And, and then I have a big list of further reading that you can use to extend your knowledge. Uh, OK. So I think um, a, a, a quick, <laughs> very quick history. Um, basically, in the 90s, the two main browsers were Netscape Navigator and Internet Explorer. Um, and the, they kept, like, and you know we've we've kind of talked about this a little bit um, in, uh, in in junior phase, but uh, there was really fast-paced development, um, which resulted in lots of new versions and lots of instability, security holes, feature gaps, um, and and we basically said use the right browser for this site or else you're, it's just not going to work for you. Um, and then in the early early 2000s we started um, standardizing JavaScript. We started standardizing DOM. Um, with the World Wide Web Consortium. Um, and we also, we also started saying, OK, well, we're going to detect what browser you're using so we can figure out how we're going to display your content. Um, and, and this is kind of how it worked. User agent sniff sniffing. So like if your browser is the lame one they make you use at work, then you get the old lame experience. Um, or else, if you're not using that browser, you can have this really cool feature. Um, and this is, this is kind of, th this, this, this way of, uh, of doing this was called um, multi-browser compatibility, as opposed to cross-browser compatibility, which is like, you know, all browsers. <laughs> oh, that was loud. Um, so uh, <laughs> one of the ways that um, we can have JavaScript support is uh, by things called polyfills. So polyfills are, are code that kind of like makes things happen uh, the way that you would expect them to happen. One example is, uh, is something called session storage, which uh, basically like, checks to see if you don't have session storage. I think IE 6 and 7 don't have session storage, and then kind of makes a thing using cookies that uh, is just kind of an uh, interesting thing that you can do with that. Oh, OK. Um, and, then, and then we've got a big list of polyfills on this wiki page that you can, you can check out later. Um, 
uh, so when HTML5 came out, they had all these, uh, these new tag names, like um, article, and I can't actually remember that many more. Um, but you can't, you can't style it in, in IE 6 to 8, because IE 6 to, 6 to 8 says, oh, well, that's, that's a weird thing that I don't understand. Um, there's actually a really cool story about how um, they figured out how to get around this, because it was, it was kind of, uh, it kind of threw a big wrench in the works of getting HTML5 to be adopted. Um, and basically someone, someone like offhandedly mentioned in a blog post that back in 2002 they figured out a way to have Internet Explorer um, recognize and style these uh, unknown elements. Um, and it got to be this huge big thing in 2008, uh, which you can read about. <laughs> um, so another thing that you have to keep in mind for cross-browser cross compatibility is um, CSS. Um, there are browser vendor specific tags, like the WebKit things that like we've seen, but we don't really completely understand. Um, there's a really cool library called Auto Prefixer, which, which will allow you to um, automatically prefix the things that need to be prefixed in your uh, CSS files. Um, you can't use media queries without CSS3, so browsers that don't support CSS3 won't be able to be responsive. There's a library called Respond.js that adds support for those um, via polyfill. Um, there are also sites that you can go on to um, check out uh, check out whether your site is responsive. So you can you can go to like Amazon.com and click go maybe I don't know okay or we could just look at this site and it basically like makes things smaller a lot like your dev tools. I kind of liked how like they have it, it kind of shows more of the website. Than, than your device is able to see. I think that was that was kind of a cool thing. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, and and there's also like a mobile emulator that will allow you to um, actually emulate like a, a Samsung Galaxy S, <laughs> yeah, uh, one of those really old uh, phone browsers. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for iPhones. Um, let's see. Um, API support. Um, this is actually a really cool tool. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of browsers don't support all of the things that uh, you want them to support, and there's this big grid, grid um, on mobile HTML5, I think, .com or something. It's on the it's on the web, the the slide presentation where they have like check marks. Um, it looks like Amazon Silk does not support CSS3 animations, um, that sort of thing. Um, Modernizer is basically a library where uh, well, it, it provides a couple of things, actually. We'll, I'll show you this, this thing first. So this is an example. I, I hosted a website, and basically what Modernizer does is you just include this JavaScript library, and you can see that it gives you this JavaScript object that, um, that gives you a property where um, if the, the feature that you want is included, it will give you a boolean that says true and if it's not it'll be false um, since I'm in, I'm in Chrome here most of these things are true there's some things that are false um, since it's <laughs> it's not a phone it doesn't have the battery API um, the other really cool thing that modernizer gives you is CSS classes that it puts on the HTML element um, that correspond to oh can't see that at all uh, that correspond to a lot of the um, a lot of the things that it uh, that it has in your JavaScript object, so um, things that say no <laughs> in front of it don't have it. So you can have a CSS class that like targets that in a certain way. Um, you can also ooh, let's uh, get out of here. You can sh you can see what your site looks like with other browsers. Um, there's a couple ones that make you pay for it, but I actually just found this one um, at that's uh, made by Microsoft that. Uh, does it for free, and you can see CS. That's how I sh that's how I found that IE6 um, thing. Uh, and there's uh, I got a link for it, um, and then a lot of a lot of links for for the reading. Um, there's a uh, there's a lot of really cool uh, things that happened along the way, and uh, it's likely to play a big role in like the 
the slower part of the S curve maybe when we're um, at our jobs. So I just wanted to let you guys all know about all these cool things and have this slide presentation that you can click a bunch of links and find out all the tools that you can use. So I'd be happy to take any questions.